Hey, what's up, y'all? This is Rodney, and I'm back. And I wanted to come and run my mouth for a quick second, okay? Now, listen. You know... So, D.L. Hughley, he was out the other night. And there was some some person. Some person. His name is the the Theophilus London, um, who basically approached D.L. Hughley about the comments that he made on Vlad TV regarding the whole Kanye and Kim Pete situation. You know, and I, I think I said this in another video. It's really crazy the way that some of these men from the game to this are acting like you would have sworn that Trevor Noah and D.L. Hughley, the ones who have enough, you know, balls to stand up and say something, you would have sworn that they had said some of the most disrespectful things, you know, in their interviews or whenever they made their comments. Like, it's weird. It's weird that y'all consider accountability disrespect. <laughs> All right, so D.L. Hughley... This is what it says. Um, Dion Hughley is coming forward with his side of the story involving Theophilus London. On Sunday, on Sunday, March the 20th, the Trinidadian rapper claimed he pressed Hughley over his recent online spat with Kanye West, promoting the comedian's security to intervene. But according to Vlad TV, Hughley was caught off guard by London's account. He said there was a brief verbal exchange and nothing more. The 59-year-old went to explain. Now, mind you, I did not know D.L. Hughley, Hughley was 60. D.L. Hughley is old enough to be my daddy because he older than my mama. Girl, <laughs> my mama was, you know, my mama was a young champ. But, yeah, she, he older than my mama. So, if he old enough to be my daddy, then he old enough to be your granddaddy. Your ass, yeah. All right. Um, he went on to explain he noticed London repeatedly walking by his table as he was eating dinner with his family at Nobu in Alabama. I'm from Alabama. <laughs> Malabama, come on, Malabama! Um, in Malibu. When Hughley went to use the restroom, he encountered London taking selfies in the mirror. London then asked, what's up, OG, before bringing up his feud with Kanye and telling him he needs to make it right. But Hughley fired back, he needs to make it right. That's where he said the conversation ended and London exited the bathroom. He also noted that the restaurant security intervened, not his own. Dio Hughley's recollection of uh, the incident differs from London's. In a series of photos and videos uploading to his Instagram stories, London appeared to have confronted Hughley near the bathroom area. L L L M A O. he wrote, I told him to apologize on camera for doing that Vlad interview and his people called security. I believe D.L. Hughley's side of what happened because you on you online trying to act like you was checking D.L. Hughley. I'm going to go ahead and say, let, let, me, let me finish. I'm going to go ahead and say something. I don't know. I, I was looking at the video and I couldn't tell if it was a white woman sitting at that table with D.L. Hughley or not. I don't know. But if it was a white woman at that table, I would have had that pick up the phone and call the cops. Hey, can you pick up the phone and call the cops? Yeah, on him. Tell him I want the white ones to come. I don't know who y'all think y'all are walking by people. Like you about to do something. Because at that point, I feel threatened. You walking by somebody at a restaurant while they're out with their family. And then you're going to approach this person in the restroom like you checking them. And then you want to have a problem when security gets involved. It wouldn't have been security. It would have been the C-O-P-S. I don't know why y'all think that the way that you grew up, the block that you were raised on is how the world operates. The world does not operate on MLK time. It does not operate on the block. Baby, y'all gonna walk up to the right person one day and honey, your face gonna be on the concrete because it's gonna be a cop walking and shoving your ass to the ground. 
I think it's disrespectful. We can say a lot about D.L. D. Hughley, and we have. <laughs> On my channel, we have, right? But in this, this situation, D.L. Hughley is absolutely correct. In a clip, it looked like London tried to walk toward the dinner table where Hughley was sitting. Before London had a chance to speak, he was pushed away by security. He captioned the post, I'm a good boy in Peacemaker, though. Just came to ball on some fish. That's why they shouldn't let y'all niggas in restaurants like that. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> Take your ass, girl. Go to Popeye's. <laughs> Leave no boo to the black people who act like they got some sense, who can go in and sit down. Not the ones who walk by somebody's table back and forth like they about to do something. A motherfucker came to go to the restroom and wash his hands and piss. Kanye West went after Hughley last week, calling him a dumb ass house N word and a drug addict. <laughs> now he called it now. <laughs> Kanye walking around here with a MAGA hat. Girl, let me shut up. Um, anyway, y'all already know what happened. Um, Kanye went on a mission early this month. Oh, y'all know they, they not letting Kanye perform at the um, Grammys. They shouldn't. Girl, y'all know Kanye will get up there acting a the fool, pulling some type of stunts in shows at the show. We're not doing that. If you want to act a fool and a donkey, that's fine. I can't do nothing about it. I can, I can say something about it. I can't do nothing about it. But one thing you're not going to do is come over here on my shit, cutting up and acting a fool on my stage. So therefore, you're not coming. Period. Anyways. Trevor Noah came back out talking about we said, we, we, I didn't, we didn't say cancel Kanye. We said cancel Kanye. Girl, I love Mr. Trevor Noah. Stop babying these niggas. Tre Kanye is a grown ass man. He gonna be all right. Kanye, first of all, Kanye not getting canceled. Okay, that's one. Two, he gonna be all right. This nigga out here calling y'all house niggas and coons. And y'all still wanna take the upper, well, you wanna take the upper road. Bitch, girl, we're going low. Anyways, Lotto, her album list um, was released. You know, we talked about her the other day. She was talking about a man, basically, basically wanting to fuck, and she don't want to fuck. And he got mad, and um, she said that he was on one of her records. So here are all the men that are on her album. <laughs> 21 Savage, Lil Wayne, Childish Gambino, Look, Dirk. Is Nardo Wick a man? I don't know. And last but not least, Kodak Black. And some people are speculating that it's Kodak Black. <clears throat> I think the speculation is correct. <laughs> okay? But we don't know. But I feel like it's him. But you know, somebody wrote something. Her name is L. Lanadis Lee. L-A-N-A-I-S-L-I. And she wrote, and, the, and Neighborhood Talk posted this. Y'all want Lotto to say the man's name for what? Y'all still listen to Chris Brown, Kodak Black, Tory Lanez, R. Kelly, Trey Songs. Y'all will still support bad men. And it's the truth. And I have to sit here and say, for me, um, I still listen to Chris Brown music. So I guess in a way I do still support Chris Brown. Um, I don't listen to R. Kelly. I've never been a Tory Lanez fan. I do. I, I I don't listen to the Trey songs, but if it popped up, I would listen to it. Um, but I, it, it just got my wheels to turn. Like at, like it's the truth. It's the truth. Even if Lotto said the name, everybody wants. And like we all want to get worked up over, like say for example, if it's Kodak Black. I'm not. I ain't. I don't know one Kodak Black song. Nothing. If it's Kodak Black, then what? Are, like people not gonna, like it doesn't matter. Like in real life, it does not matter. That's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter. Okay, she says Kodak Black. Then what's going to happen next? Nothing. She says Tory Lanez. What's going to happen next? Nothing. Well, not, not Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez on her album. You know, if whatever, who up on her album? If she said a name, what's going to happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen. So it's kind of like, what's the point? Anyways. <laughs> All right. 
Wendy Williams has reportedly vowed not to drink in preparation of big comeback. Uh, Wendy Williams, 57, has been out of work for months due to a number of health reason, reason, it, it, I don't know where I got reasons from, uh, health issues, but she seems to be on the mend. A new report says she's no longer relying on a wheelchair and even, and even looking to return to work. She looks good, said a source. She isn't fully back, but she seems like 80% of her old self. In another couple of months, and I bet she's totally back. The source credits her alleged improvements to the support of her family and several lifestyle changes, including taking a break from alcohol. Wendy has vowed not to drink and she's eating much healthier these days and it shows. Her, her legs aren't nearly as swollen. I mean, you know, I, I really want Wendy to make a big comeback. You know, does she need to come back to her TV show? I mean, does she need to have another TV show? Not really. I think Wendy should go back to radio or like have a podcast. That's really where it's at right now. Like, the, and then the thing is like, it's not like Wendy got canceled because her ratings were low. You know, it's not like she was on some Nick Cannon type. So like, Wendy just couldn't make it. To, Wendy had health issues and the show must go on, right? Now, I don't know what Sherry Shepard going to do. Hopefully, Sherry succeeds. But, um, you know, I just hope that Wendy, you know, can get it together and she's okay. Oh, listen at this. Wells Fargo hit with lawsuit to uh, with lawsuit due to allegations of discriminating against black homeowners. So throughout the last few years, Wells Fargo has been involved in more than a few controversies due to the company's business dealings. I bet you Wendy sitting back like I tried to tell y'all hoes when they was playing with my money. They ain't no good. <laughs> Okay, but a new legal issue could be more damaging to the company uh, than ever. According to reports, Wells Fargo has been formally served with a lawsuit due to allegations that the bank purposely discriminated against black homeowners. Bloomberg exclusively reports on March 18th, Wells Fargo was officially sued for allegedly discriminating against black homeowners by relying on modernized version of redlining that denied more, I'm sorry, that denied them lower interest rates through refinancing and forcing them to pay more for home loans. <laughs> Redlining dates back decades, originally occurring through the Federal Housing uh, Administration and is defined as the refusal to insure mortgages in, in and near black neighborhoods and supports agreements that block or restrict the sales of homes to black Americans. That is, uh, it's so fucked up, cause maybe I'm a little naive. Like I would not think that this would still be going on in 2022. And I know it's, it's, I know this just didn't happen in 2022. This is always it dates back. But like y'all, this is like this is still happening to this day. The class action lawsuit was filed in San Francisco and further claimed that Wells Fargo's uh, business practices resulted in black homeowners being forced into home foreclosure. The court documents also claim that Wells Fargo knowingly rejected a large number of refinancing applications from black homeowners back in 2020 at the height of the in order to lock in lower rates. Additionally, data from over 8 million refinancing applications allegedly shows that Wells Fargo was more than likely to approve refinancing bids from white applicants earning between $0 and $63,000 annually than it was for black, for black applicants earning between $120,000 and $168,000 annually. I'll put the link to the descript uh to the article in the girl so <laughs> you gotta you got you gotta you got a nigga out there making double as what this white bitch making and you know what I tell you this is sad it's really sad it's really sad that shit is still going on to this day
Wells Fargo, y'all, Wells Fargo, y'all always did some shit. Anyways, I don't know why I'm so goddamn surprised. All right, y'all. That's it. I'll talk to y'all girls later. Bye.